Hi, it's Robin. Got something different here today. This is a vinyl record by a band called Prodigal, album Electric Eye. This is from 1984. It's got some cool audio equipment here. And I think that's actually the cover of their first album hidden there in the corner. But the reason I've got this album here is that it has a Commodore 64 connection. I gave the album a listen and it's fine 1980s rock. It's even got a bit of vocoder and 80s electric guitars and synths on it. But that's not the Commodore 64 connection. If we pull the record out here. Uh, it's got the liner notes. Here's the record. If I hold this up just right, see right there in the runout groove. Is that clear there? That's pretty good. Anyway, that says C64 etched into the runout groove on this record. That's on side one. And I heard about this online that this record actually contains a Commodore 64 program. Apparently it's in the runout groove. That's all the music. And then there's always this last section here that the needle follows quickly and it hits a runout groove. And that's an endless groove to stop the record needle I guess from running in. It will stay there unless you have an auto return player. Normally that runout groove is just a thin line like here on side one. Not sure you're going to be able to make this out, but but on side two, the runout groove is a little thicker. If you just look right, right there outside the label, it's a little bit bigger. So apparently there's audio in there, and that audio, if you record that onto a cassette and stick that in a data set, it should load a C64 program. I'd assume a very short C64 program based on the thickness of that groove. Now I went looking, it doesn't seem anybody's actually run this on a 64. I couldn't find any evidence of it. I saw people talking about it and how it was a neat Easter egg on this album. I'm not expecting something amazing. It's just neat that there would be a C64 program on this 35 year old record. Okay, so I've got my cheap turntable here. An Ion Profile Pro, and I'm going to put side two on here. So the goal here is to get the audio on this runout groove onto a cassette. I'm not going to record directly onto a cassette because I have a feeling that this is going to be a somewhat fiddly process that might have to try quite a few times. So I'm just going to record it digitally from the record and then use that digital copy back onto cassette. I want to record the audio that's on this runout groove here. So let's put it down just right near the end of the record. I'll put it down here. In case it's not obvious, this is a Christian rock band. Oh, this isn't going to be about Jesus, is it? Okay, so I'll watch the needle run out. You see what happens? My record has an auto return feature. Basically this, this record player is incapable of getting to that runout groove. And this particular model does not have a way of disabling that easily. But thanks to uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, V Westlife, he's got several videos about record players, including this one. And by watching those, I learned enough to know how to get at this. So let's try. So what we got to do is take the record off and then remove this platter here. By the way, when I'm watching Techmoan videos and he's frequently got dust on his stuff and everything, I now uh, sympathize with him. I tried to clean all this before I <laughs> record it and uh, it's hard to get rid of all the dust. So the platter can be rotated here and it has an access hole, it actually has two of them here. If you rotate like this, you can see in here, that is the drive belt. And we can simply unhook this, the belt from around there, gently release it. And then here there's also a little retaining ring. And if you just 
get a screwdriver under that. It'll pop off. It might go flying. Oh, there we go. So once that clip is off, you can just lift, lift this up. And you see there's uh, the drive belt is just around this inner part. And watch out, there's some grease on there. Don't touch that because it'll get messy. Now we can see the mechanism here. We can disable the auto return by simply lifting this gear right up and off. And just remembering that this it has a little uh, groove in here, and that has to point towards the spindle in the middle. Should be able to put back together again. And then we can put the platter back on, just through one of these. Match to get a bit of that grease on me, no matter what. But if you just pull the drive belt out, like this, and hold it. And then, okay, making sure the drive belt isn't twisted. Just hold it out, just put it around that way. Ah, it is twisted. Okay, just make sure it goes around that white spindle there. And it turns freely. And I don't think it really matters to put that clip back on. I'll put the mat back on. Let's try it again. Okay, and we'll put it down. There. Now it's at the outer runout groove. But I believe there's actually audio on the other side of that. So this might take a number of tries to get right. But if we just lift up the needle slightly, give it the tiniest bump. Well, that might be a bit too much. Let's try that. Nope. Try it again. Like I said, this might take a few tries. Just want to bump it ever so slightly. Okay, if it doesn't work after a full revolution, then we know we didn't bump it enough. Let's try that. Well, there's the audio, but we went too far. All right, I think that was a good capture. Now that was a very short amount of audio, so I'm not expecting a lot from this program if it works at all, but we'll give that a try. I've actually got a brand new cassette that I'm going to try and dump this to. I found a store here in town that's still selling new tapes. I don't know if they're just uh, new old stock. They had a great big box of them for two bucks each. Let's open that up. Two bucks Canadian. That's not too bad. And one other thing to note, every tape has a leader here. Classic trick, if you got a pencil, just put that in the hole of the take-up reel, and then just wind it. All this blank part of the tape here can't be recorded on, and there's the actual magnetic tape. So if you are ever trying to transfer data or well, any kind of audio onto a tape from say a computer that may not have any delay at the beginning of the tape make sure that you manually forward to some actual magnetic tape okay well stick this in my cassette deck and try to record onto it all right that's a lot of reflection on there so i've got that wave file edited here in audacity i turned it into a mono file even though the capture was in stereo and just boosted the volume a bit there Okay, now we'll try it on the tape deck. Just put the tape in. Put it in record mode. 
with it paused. And I've done a test run, playing the sound back on the Mac. And I've got the recording level up to full so that the volume level is peaking at zero. That should be about right. And now that that's working, press pause, play it here. All right, that's it. And we'll give that a try on the Commodore. Okay, we're gonna try it out now. I've, I did have my 64C set up, but I decided to set up a classic bread bin C64 to go with the 1984 theme here. And I've got one of my old data sets set up here. There's a misconception that nobody in North America used cassette with their C64, but that's not true. It was actually very common, but only for the first couple years of Commodore 64 from 1982 to about 1984. And then disk drive completely took over and the companies did abandon publishing on cassette. I'll probably make a full episode about that sometime. Okay, let's try out the tape we record here. And we'll rewind it. Shift stop to trigger the load. Press play and let's hope this works. Found blank. Bah. Try that again. That flash <laughs> device not present. Well, this isn't working too good. I'm going to go mess around. It's going to be really tedious to edit this all if I try to fiddle around uh, all on camera. And I'll see if I can get it working. Back in a bit. Okay, I messed around with a whole bunch of different combinations and had all kinds of load errors and all sorts of trouble. I gave up on that cassette deck I showed you there, the dual cassette deck. I dug around and found this, a Mattel Electrox Aquarius data recorder. This is for the uh, fairly terrible Aquarius computer, but it is, I believe, a mono cassette recorder. And on the back here, it has jacks for the earphone. I guess that's probably a remote control. And for microphone, I hooked this up to my Mac running Audacity with the WAV file I captured from the record, recorded onto here, and I think we're finally in business. So Aquarius was good for something, eh? All right, so I've got it here on the Maxwell tape. And once again, shift stop. Press play. We'll see if it finds something this time. Found electric eye. <laughs> Bingo. Okay, press Commodore to load it. And there it is. Quotes from Albert Einstein and Jesus. Perfection of means and confusion of ends seems to characterize our age. Albert Einstein, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. All right, that is some relief. Let's see, is it just a basic program? Oh, if I hit stop, nothing happens. Stop restore. Oh, it broke there. List. Yeah, and sure enough, it's just a short basic program here. Sets the border color, screen color, read D string. Okay, so it reads in these strings from the quotes. And if there's a star, then it ends the program. What is this? TCB 1984. Interesting. So that is probably the initials of the programmer. And it's funny that he didn't even put a REM statement in. 
And I suppose that's completely valid because the program's already ended by then. And this is a short little routine that centers the code. Interesting. And there's the star at the end that indicates that the end of the program has been reached. So that's a tight little program that was squeezed into just several seconds of audio. Now that's not an amazing program, <laughs> but it's pretty cool that 35 years ago, some guys wrote that program, hit it on the record, and I'm not sure anybody has found it. I read some articles about this and it sounded like somebody kind of figured it out and they got a free computer out of the deal from the record label. That'd be cool. And it'd be interesting to find out if indeed TCB is the programmer and whether, uh, whether we can find TCB somehow. So I did a little bit more research into the band. Unfortunately, the lead vocalist, Lloyd Boldman, who played keyboards and sang in this band, he passed away in 2014, but the guitarist, Rick Fields, is still around, and he is active on Facebook. And I asked him about this program, and he said that they, none of them knew how to program the Commodore, so they found a young guy working for a computer store in Florida to write the slow program for them. So the only time the band ever saw the program was there at that computer shop in Florida in 1984, just before it was mastered onto this record. All right, thanks for watching. I've got some other places where music and Commodore 64 and other computers cross over. So if you're interested in this subject, let me know. I really like these kind of Easter eggs. There are some other ones, uh, not quite like this, but there are some other ones I have in my collection that I'd uh, like to talk about if you guys are interested. And thanks to my patrons at Patreon for helping support me with uh, producing this. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.